children. You know, it's easy sometimes to lose focus or lose track of what you are, who you are, and what God has done for you, because sometimes we get caught up in either emotions or we get caught up by the circumstances of our life that distract us from what God might have already told us or what we might already know, and we get maybe not losing our faith so much or losing our way as becoming discouraged, that sometimes we get maybe a little down, maybe a little down and out, and we're not wiped out and we're not blown out and it's not like we're completely devastated, but we're just kind of, you know, not quite the way we should be, you know, and a little discouraged. And for me, my time of discouragement was yesterday when my camera went out and my microphone went out. I got the camera back but lost the microphone. And <laughs> it was discouraging for a while. I mean, I didn't really let it come out as much as I just went through the motions of going through the steps that needed to be done in order to try to resolve the issue and then coming to the conclusion that it couldn't be resolved and had to leave it in God's hands. And 24 hours later, and it wasn't just a simple drying out of some electronic gear, but a miraculous thing happened and God took care of it. But there are times where we do get discouraged and when those happen, those are the times that we should admit, first of all, that we are discouraged. But don't let it affect you to the place of turning away from where you could be encouraged. And that sometimes is in the Lord and in your relationship with God for what He has already done for you and with you up to this point. Because if He's brought you this far, trust me, He's going to take you the rest of the way. And that's the rest of the way home. But in Tozer today, simple rules for the Christian in discouragement. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Isaiah 12:2. Christian men and women should be aware that there is danger in a defeated spirit within us, for it can plunge us into discouragement. Discouragement, by the way, is hardly a sin, but it can lead to any number of sins, for to discourage is to disenhearten. In such a case, we may still go to church, but we have little appetite for it. Nothing seems to mean quite the same anymore to us, and nothing means anything to us as it once did. Hymns are dull and tasteless, worship is dry and boring, we know the same old songs, we go through the same old motions, and the lessons and the speeches and the sermons are just a bore, because we already know it and we've been there before. I want to give you some rules for the time of discouragement, because you will go through a time of discouraging, discouragement, and being discouraged. First, do not accept the judgment of your own heart about the matter. A discouraged heart will always go astray. So do not think about yourself the way you feel about yourself, because what God says about you is more important than what you feel about you. God says he loves you, <laughs> and that's good enough for, frankly, salvation to be accomplished in you. Instead, go to God and Jesus. God loves you, and Jesus loves you enough to have died for you. He thought you were worth something. Remember that discouraged Gideon was hiding until God sought him out and said, Get up, thou mighty man of God. The second rule is this. Make no important decisions while you are discouraged. Don't resign your job. Don't sidestep or step outside of it. But don't sell your property or get down before God and ask him to take the defeat. <laughs> don't resign your job. Don't sell your property. Don't do anything foolish. But... Get down before God and talk to Him. Go to God and ask Him to take the defeat out of your spirit and reverse this out of your heart so you don't be led by the emotion of the circumstance you're feeling, but rather the devotion that you have with God. Finally, go to the Bible and read the promises of God. Read and claim the promises until your heart beats with joy, the joy of His promises, because what He has said will come true for you. And you know it's true because it has before, and it shall again. Remember that the living God is everything. Our victory cannot enrich God, and our defeat cannot impoverish Him. Life on the side where the promises of God are bright. 
If we live with the Lord as we talk to Him, then we are encouraged by Him and not by the circumstances only, but rather we take the circumstances to Him and He brings His wisdom to it so we can see through our way to be discouraged for a time, but then eventually come out with the encouragement that God has given us. And then we are able to help those that become discouraged at times, that they might need also to feel that same faith, knowing that the times of feelings will change, but the reassurance is that God still loves you, and God is still the same. And He hasn't abandoned you. You just feel different today than you did yesterday.